Now, I've reviewed my share of professional mobile workstations here on this channel, whether it be from HP, whether it be from Lenovo, and the one we have here from Dell, the Precision line. That's right, I took delivery and I did a live unboxing of the Dell Precision 7670. Now, Dell was kind enough to send two versions over, the Max Performance model, or the Thin model, as they call it. Uh, we're gonna see the differences between the two in terms of the weight, the size, and the performance, but I think I Either one is going to be a great choice, as you'll see in this video, and they're both employing something new for 2022, and that may be a standard going forward. They both have cam memory. It's a pretty interesting technology, and I think it's going to replace the rather dated SOTUM slots we've gotten used to for the past 25 or 30 years. So sit back, relax. We're going to find out if these are the mobile professional workstations we've all been waiting for. And again, they check a lot of the boxes. Hey, everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Dell Precision 7670 mobile workstation, all new for 2022. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unboxing, I want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Dell. I'm not being sponsored by Dell. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Dell is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from Dell. And once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Let's see what Dell sent us over. So this is going to be pretty interesting. Okay, this looks good. Dell right here. I don't know if this is the, if this is a little hefty here. I don't know which one this is. It might be the performance model. All right, we got some documentation on the 7670 people. This is a mobile workstation. We'll see how powerful this is. Let's take a look at the charger. Now this is a barrel pin charger. No surprise there. Uh, this one is a 240 watt adapter and this is gonna supply the power of course. And this one is the power cord okay so welcome to dell let's do great things together oh wow yeah this is probably the thick boy right here and you can feel it but i could tell you i like the styling of this all metal design here so that's the back and we're going to talk about this door in a moment we'll talk about accessibility you get two for one tonight all right let's get the next one So let's take this out. And I can definitely tell you it's a little bit lighter as well. So we get some more documentation. We already saw, we already know the deal on that. Let's see which power charger this one. We saw the other one. So this one is 180 watts. The other one I think was 240. This is 180. And this is also a barrel pin connection. Yes, so very, very nice. So, so this is smaller, this one, 180 watts. And then of course you get your power cord, okay? Typical stuff. So let's bring this down, let's take it out of its felt. And there it is. So this one is a little bit thinner. It's just a little bit thick also, but thinner than the performance model. This one has the Core i7 in it. This is super premium. Wow, the keys feel great in terms of the keyboard. You're gonna love the numpad, William, it's there. We got NFC here, we could probably take this off. 4K plus or UHD plus display, 3840 by 2400. It's got a 180 degree hinge that goes as far back, actually goes like as far back as you see there. Very good key travel on it. I like what I'm seeing here. This is super premium, wow. So this is the Core i9, you can see that here. So this is the big boy. Yes, these are powerhouse mobile workstations. Now, oh wow, this is also very nice. So again, nice keyboard and we can bring this one here. It's a little bit thicker, a little bit uh, it's obviously taller from a little bit thicker, obviously you can see there, you can see them both here. Okay, both have 16 inch UHD plus OLED displays. Now, here's another thing that we haven't seen before from Dell. We've got a switch to turn off the webcam. So you've got your physical switch on both. 
very, very nice. And both have full HD webcams, unlike the XPSs we saw. So this is gonna be very welcome indeed, especially for those needing to work remotely. So this is gonna be very good. Let's see side by side how much thicker this one is. So this is the smaller one. We'll put it on top of here. Pretty much the same footprint. You can see there a little bit different obviously this one is thinner than this one these are heavy they're not they're not the lightest things in the world you can see the same ports over here and you can see the same ports on that side you know one has the core i9 one has the core i7 so this one is a little just a smidge thicker for the performance model just to give you a little bit more thermal headway Okay, let's check out the port selection. On the left side is your power button, your LAN port with a drop jaw entry into that, an HDMI port, USB-A, and then you get two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports that are full function, supporting data, charge, and display out, and you get a smart card reader. Moving over to the right side is a full-size SD card reader, and the good news is the cards sit flush with the unit. That's good. A 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack, a USB-C. C port that's not Thunderbolt and finally a USB-A port to round out the ports on this unit and I would say all in all an excellent port selection. So of course I have my iFixit. Now these look like Phillips head screws. So let's see there's one, two, three, four, five, six captive screws. Oh sh! There goes a $5,000 <laughs> Hope Dell's not watching. <laughs> okay, we just got to take our time. Got it. Got it. So to get to this, you have to remove this screw. Okay? So if you want to access it without taking off the bottom plate, you got to remove this screw. Okay? So for those that are wondering... And here is the thin and performance model side by side. And as you can see, the performance model has a 93 watt hour battery, whereas the thin model has the 83 watt hour battery. Hence, you're going to get a little bit better battery life on the performance model. That makes sense. Now, you also can see the cam memory here. Instead of the sodium slots, you get cam memory, which is a new standard here that they're pushing. And it has a lot of advantages. We'll get into that in a separate video. But just so you know, the cam memory is upgradable and my review units have 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory. And great news when it comes to the SSD, there are two M.2 SSD slots and they are running in RAID 0. Each of these units has blazingly fast reads and writes. Check this stuff out. Wow, these are smoking. And as far as the wireless is concerned, we're looking at Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, and you'll notice on the left side is a slot for the optional 5G. Yep, that's going to be great for the mobile road warrior who needs to get work done on the road. And for those wondering, that Wi-Fi Bluetooth combo card is soldered into the motherboard, so it's not upgradable by the user, just so you know. And to me, one of the biggest stars of the show has to be the gorgeous 16-inch AMOLED displays here. We're looking at 3840 by 2400 resolution. That's UHD+. Plus. These are touch displays that are really responsive. They have the super vibrant colors, the really deep blacks, and the really high contrast. All the hallmarks of an OLED display are here. It also gets really bright. I had no issues in terms of that brightness. They are glossy displays, but really not too much of an issue because it gets so bright on on these panels so really good now whether you go with the max performance model or whether you go with the quote-unquote thin model they're both getting that same oled display and again it's absolutely gorgeous no complaints really great color accuracy really great coverage of the color gamut they support hdr so watching high dynamic range content has been excellent and as i mentioned they are touch displays so navigating through the os with your finger with touch has worked out really well and one thing to note, there's no high refresh rate option. This is 60 hertz. There's no option for 120 or even 90 hertz, not on this unit. But then again, this is not really made for the average consumer. This is made for the mobile professional that does high-end video graphics, high-end video work, and stuff like that. They're not going to care about the high refresh rate. They care about the pixel count, and they care about the power this packs under the hood at the end of the day. Both these models share a lot of the same things, obviously the same webcam. 1080p full HD IR that means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello 
And there's also a fingerprint scanner located on the keyboard that allows you to log in with Windows Hello. The fingerprint scanner is the power button. It doubles as a fingerprint scanner. Worked well, setup was good, everything working as expected. Now, there is a shutter switch on this laptop. It's a physical shutter switch above the camera that allows you to turn off the webcam for more security and privacy. Things that we like to see here, obviously. This is a very, very fully loaded device. This is the full HD camera on the performance model of the Precision 7670. Again, full HD. It also has the shutter switch. It's IR. You can log in with face recognition. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. Okay, let's talk performance. And as you can see, we're going to compare both the thin and the performance model, the Core i7 versus the Core i9. And as you can see, very, very capable machines here, really powerful stuff, especially that Core i9, but you get really good stuff here from that Core i7 as well. So very capable for doing certainly everyday tasks, but also your ISV certified applications that this professional grade workstations will definitely need. And that's going to be great. So high-end video editing is going to be great on this CAD work, 3D rendering, it's all there on these machines. And when you're not doing work, this is a very capable machine when it comes to gaming. Now I'm showing you the one with the Core i7 and the RTX A2000. And as you can see, very playable frame rates on some of the more popular titles. In fact, look at Cyberpunk 2077. That has some really playable frame rates, even on the high settings. Expect even better performance in the performance model. And when you compare it to something like the Apple M1 Pro, this is definitely better in terms of the multi-core performance, although the single core performance is still really good on that M1 Pro. But these are very, very capable machines, very powerful machines. And when you look at the Cinebench R23, that's a good indication, especially that multi-core score of just how powerful these are. And when it comes to the surface temperatures, we remained relatively cool. There is a hot spot in the upper left-hand corner, as you see here, and there is a hot spot on the underside, but for the most part, remained relatively cool. And when I put it under performance mode, you didn't see too much thermal throttling, although it does get a little bit loud in terms of the fan noise, which is expected because of the chassis, because of all the heat it's generating and all the power it's consuming, it has to do something to cool it down. Again, the high fan noise, the high loudness of the fan noise is something you may notice. But when you're in the other modes, when you're doing everyday tasks, it's not much of an issue. But again, it is noticeable under heavy load. Okay, let's check out battery life. And depending on which device you go with, the performance model has a 93 watt hour battery. The thin model has 83 watt hour battery. So a 10 watt hour difference between the two. And as you can see from the results on my continuous web surfing test over Wi Fi at 150 nits, the performance model did eight hours and 35 minutes, whereas the thin model did seven hours and 39 minutes on that same test. So not the greatest battery life when you think about mixed usage and real world uh, mixed usage but when you look at it overall when you compare it to others in this category it certainly holds its own and again with that performance model you get 10 extra watt hours in terms of battery life so that's actually pretty decent and when it comes to charging both support fast charging so not too bad and remember the performance model has a higher wattage power charger over the thin model but both again charge really fast that's pretty good and for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger and it has 180 degrees as you see here. Now, when it comes to the keyboard, both models have pretty much the same keyboard here. Actually, they are identical. You'll notice the power button, which doubles as a fingerprint scanner, lights up, so that's pretty good. It has good tactility, good key travel, and they both have a numpad. So if you're a number cruncher doing Excel spreadsheets and the like, you're gonna like the inclusion of that numpad. But one thing that is resulting from that is that the touchpad is a little bit off center as a result but you get used to it real quick now speaking of that touchpad very responsive when it comes to scrolling when it comes to gestures really really good in that department so between the keyboard and the touchpad they did a really great job and the keyboards on both units are backlit really nice against these dark keys so the white leds really light up helping you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment both worked well Okay, let's talk about the audio. And these are downward facing speakers toward the front and they actually sound pretty good, filling up a room rather nicely. They have some good volume, good mids and decent bass. Overall, I would say pretty good volume on these mobile workstations. 
Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Dell Precision 7670 mobile workstations here for 2022? I like the fact that they're moving to the cam memory, trying to push the envelope forward. It's a really big upgrade in terms of the SODOM slots we normally see. But of course, you could always get this with SODOM slots if you don't want to get the cutting edge. This is a standard I think will be going forward, will be adopted by other OEMs. That's just my take on it. But I like what they're doing here in terms of that cam memory. Now, as far as the device itself, really powerful processors, powerful GPUs. It's just slightly thinner and lighter than the performance model, but the performance model gives you 10 extra watt hour battery with 93 watt hours instead of 83 watt hours. And that made a bit, a little bit of a difference about an hour. And you're getting really good performance out of this, a really gorgeous 4K plus display here. It's a touch display, really impressive. And of course, you're getting the solid all metal build here with that graphic finish on these these are really nice looking mobile workstations there's no doubt about it there really are very few negatives i think the biggest one of course is obviously the price these are very expensive units but of course these are made for professional grade enterprise users and mobile professionals that need to have this kind of power at their fingertips and they're willing to pay the price as long as it's the right tool for the job they need to be able to work on these isv certified applications and they will get discounts when they buy them in bulk especially the bigger companies the bigger corporations again these are going to be great for the really professional creatives that want to get work done and don't want to sacrifice portability and stuff like that. Yes, they're heavy when you compare it to consumer laptops, but when you think about the power these pack under the hood, they really bring a lot to the table. So that's why you're going to get the high price, and that's my biggest negative. Otherwise, these are really great mobile workstations here for 2022. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.